Greetings, fellow traders. Welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. You know me, I'm John Zadar, and this is Monday, June 5th. Now, what we do on this show is we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make us money, specifically stocks under five bucks. And it doesn't matter what market they're on because penny stocks are on every market. Well, today we're gonna to be looking at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. And we've already looked at this stock on April 2nd. This is Dragonfly Energy Holdings, ticker DFLI. Now, I really like this stock for a long haul. She's in a hot sector. She's in the green energy sector making electric batteries. She just came on the market October of last year, but she's been in business for years and making good revenues. Well, she caught my attention again. Yeah, she does have new news and new filings, which we'll catch up with, but that's not what caught my attention. You know me, you know where I do my research, the charts. The chart caught my attention, but not for any reason that most charts catch my attention. She does have an inkling of a breakout. I can see that there, but what caught my attention was a subtle technical that has been building up over the last two weeks called a divergence. This is normally a very reliable technical that you can count on for a reversal on the chart. And since the price has been falling ever since we looked at it, sad to say, this is a good time to look at it. This could pop and pop strong. So DFLI, she finished today at $2.74 and almost 3% gains. Now, since we've already covered this stock in one video, I went into a lot of information on that. I'm not going to rehash all of that, but I will catch you up on what has happened since we looked at it. Now, let's refresh your memory on what the company does do. First, right off the bat, there's two things you need to know about Dragonfly. One, she is not just a battery company. Calling Dragonfly a battery company is like calling your house a brick because you used bricks to build it. They're just using the batteries to build up to what they wanna be. The second thing is they are vertically integrated. Now this is really important, especially in their line of business where they are dependent on supply of materials. They have actually got their own mine. They made a deal back in 2020 before they were on the market and they are starting the mining right now in 2023 and it's in their own home state, Nevada. How convenient is that? So they're going to mine their own lithium, process it, make their own batteries, sell them, install them, and create these power banks, these green storage units that we're going to be able to have at our own homes, our own businesses. Then they're going to connect all of those into a smart power grid, and that connects to the electric company. And if the electric companies ever have a problem, they will be able to rely on the extra power out here so none of us suffer. And I'm sure we're going to need them. Think about it, folks. If we all go to electric cars and we plug them in to charge them, are our electric companies going to be able to handle all of that on top of what we're already using? I don't think so. I think we need new solutions, and this is their plan. Now, their most recent description out of their most recent news press says that Dragonfly Energy Holdings is headquartered in Reno, Nevada, and they are a leading supplier of deep cycle lithium ion batteries. Dragonfly Energy's R&D initiatives are revolutionizing the energy storage industry through innovative technologies and manufacturing processes. And if you're interested, they've got lots of information on their website. Their most current financials just chock full of information. Yeah, about this sort of stuff. And there's a good amount of it on my video as well. Today, Dragonfly's energy non-toxic deep cycle lithium ion batteries are displacing lead acid batteries across a wide range of end markets, including RVs, marine vessels, off-grid installations, and other storage applications. Dragonfly Energy is also focused on delivering energy storage solutions to enable a more sustainable and reliable smart grid through the future deployment of the company's proprietary and patented solid state cell technology. And that right there, folks, the solid state cell technology is the golden egg from the goose. This is what everybody wants. We haven't got it yet. Lots of people are getting close. They are very close. They just put in a patent for it. 
What's a solid state? Well, solid state mean it has no moving parts. They're less expensive to make, but most importantly, they don't explode. They don't catch fire. That's what everybody really wants, and they are working towards that right now. So they are working in a lot of different industries, but they are primarily working on those power grids across the nation. All right, let's go take a look at that relative volume. Well, it looks pretty good, like a 100% jump there from 187,000 to 384,000. Now, I'm not saying those are big numbers, they're not super impressive, but she is getting more attention and the price is rising. So all is good. Speaking of all is good, her share structure. She's got 46 million outstanding and 62% of those shares are owned by the insiders. They really believe in this company and why shouldn't they? Well, that leaves 9.3 million in the float. An excellent float, folks. A legitimate low float. 9.3 million. Financials for Dragonfly. Well, as I said, the company has been making money even before they got onto the market. Here in 2021, they did $78 million. At the end of 2022, they did $86 million. And we do have their most recent quarterly report, which just came out here in March. They did roughly $19 million. Now, I had a strange deja vu moment when I was looking at this page because in my mind, I remember seeing something here. So I actually went back into my video and sure enough, right there for December 2022, they say they did $20 million. Well, you can't take it back once it's out there. So wherever it went, I don't know. But we know they did 20 million in December and they did about 19 million here in the March quarter. Looking at the disclosures, they have had a variety of disclosures. Most of them I don't consider most important to share with you. The one I do think is important, actually the three right here, these have come out in the last month. The 42.4B3 twice and the S1. This S1 is huge. It is well over 100 pages. They are a prospectus. That means they're considering putting shares on the market. How many? Whew. Took me a while to find it in this 100 page one. About 23 million as far as I can tell. Now I don't know when they're gonna do it. They haven't given us a date. So we've still got that low float of 9.3 million. Let's take a look at that news now. We're gonna go ahead and scroll on down to April 18th, since we looked at it April 2nd. They tell us here that Dragonfly Energy and Airstream announced battery partnership. You know who Airstream is, that RV trailer, the one that looks like a silver bullet all made out of aluminum. Well, that's owned by Thor. Thor owns Airstream, Keystone, and Titan. And this company did a deal with them July of last year. They are now supplying the batteries for Keystone and Airstream. Plus, Thor invested $15 million into this company. I think they're tight. They're going to be together for a while. Then we've got three other pieces of news here. All pretty much came out in the last month that I want to tag into. First one here came out in May 9th. Dragonfly Energy and Ioneer signed Lithium Supply Agreement. Ioneer is the company that they did the deal with back in 2020 for the lithium mines. They tell us here that the company today announced a commercial offtake agreement that the company believes will strengthen the U.S. battery supply chains and invest in the production and manufacturing of Nevada-sourced lithium. The agreement between the two Nevada-based companies is expected to pave the way for continued investment in the state and provide Dragonfly with a domestic supply of lithium carbonate, a critical component in lithium iron phosphate battery cells. Now, the name of the mine they've gotten a hold of is Rylite Ridge. Rylite Ridge is one of the most sophisticated, undeveloped U.S. lithium projects and one of the few in the world where lithium will be extracted and refined locally. Once federal permitting and construction is complete, Rylite Ridge is expected to quadruple current U.S. lithium output quadruple four times as much either we don't produce a lot or this mine is going to produce a hell of a lot the agreement also moves dragonfly energy closer to achieving the company's mission of establishing a vertically integrated lithium battery cycle from mining to cell and pack production to recycling that next piece of news comes out may 24th Dragonfly Energy Lithium Batteries to be installed on all new leisure travel vans. 
The company, the maker of the Battleborn batteries and an industry leader in energy storage, has partnered with Triple E Recreational Vehicles to include Dragonfly's energy lithium ion batteries as standard equipment on all the leisure travel vans starting on the 2024 model. And each van gets two batteries, not just one. That next article comes out June 1st, and really, there's not a lot here to be spoken about. They are actually talking about the recession and the fears and how this sort of solution is needed. And they tell us right now that the battery market is currently $85 billion. As a matter of fact, that was last year. And they expect it to go up to $400 billion by 2030. And this company, they have 45 filed and pending patents already. Now that's where the money's at, folks. The patents. Everybody's trying to make a better battery. Everybody's trying to make a solid state battery. Whoever has the patents are going to be the ones allowed to make them and sell them. And this company's doing pretty well in that department. Now there is a lot more information we could cover. As a matter of fact, you can come to this page here if you really want a lot of information. I found this stock research today. Now, I can't give you the uh, address here because it's just too bloody big. I will post it down in the comments. They've got everything here, folks. They talk about what the company is, the reasons why you should be considering it. I wish we had time to go through every one of those. They even talk about the chart opportunity. So there's lots of information here if you want more. Speaking of chart opportunities, let's go take a look at that chart right now. Ah, now here's a chart I can have some fun with. This is ticker DFLI, Dragonfly Energy, and this is Thinkorswim. It's also known as TOS, and you can get it for free just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And hey, that's free too. <laughs> so we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view for the company. We got a fantastic high bubble in December of $28.75, and then a terrible fall all the way down to a low of $2.52, well over a 1,000% drop. And right now, we're at $2.74. Now you can see from this high bubble down to that blue line, she was in a downtrend. After that blue line, she started going up. Well, that's when we looked at it, on that blue line, April 2nd. She came down, we saw it at $3, and she started bouncing from that point and climbing and then surging. She hit a high here of over $9.80. That is well over 300% gains if you got in and got out. She did come down really fast down to that 200, and she's fallen under it now, and looks like she's been going sideways. But if you take a closer look, you can see she is running downhill. And if you look down here, you see our MACD is running uphill. That's our first divergence. Whenever you see the price doing the opposite of what the technical says it should be doing, you can expect a reversal, a correction. And you can see this has been climbing for about two weeks right now while the price has been falling. We have an imminent crossover on our PPO right now as well. And she is trying to break through the 50-day SMA, but there's not a lot going on. But we had one strong spike here, which I really like to see. This shows me intention. We haven't had one of those in quite a while. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. Now, you can see this a lot better here. You can see she's going downhill. You see this one is going uphill, but so is this one right here, folks. The PPO is also going uphill. We have two technicals doing the opposite of what the chart is doing. This tells me there's going to be a strong correction. This gives me an indication. See there? It was flat, flat, flat. We get one huge poke through the 200 telling us that's where I want to go. I have intentions on climbing. So this is going to get a little flatter as it's doing right now, and I'm expecting her to jump. And with this back pressure building up with these two technicals, I'm expecting it to be a slingshot. I think we could get a nice run out of this. Now, we got a high here 20 days ago of $5.33. And what? Back in December, $28. So we got all kinds of room to grow. God only knows where it could go. Looking at that five-day, five-minute look. All right, she's under the 200 here. Hit that low bubble. Got up on top of the 200. There's your spike. Boy, that came very early in the morning. 4.05 a.m., folks. This shows you there is activity on the stock early in the morning. And we can trade it. 
it's on the NASDAQ. You're allowed to trade pre-market, after-market. You don't need any special qualifications or special permissions. All you need to do is remember to change your order from a day trade to a day trade plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You got to get extension in there or it won't see your order. It'll just ignore it. So she hit this real high, breaking through that one hour, 200 day SMA, came back down and she's riding on top of her 200 day SMA right now and her 50 is underneath. But I don't see a lot of potential on the five minute chart. It is all about that divergence, folks. That is back pressure building up. It's like shaking up a bottle of champagne and pulling that cork off. That's the sort of thing I'm expecting, folks. So put DFLI on your watch list now. Watch the volume, watch the charts. If you see the volume start to spurt, that could be it. The cork could be out of the bottle. As I said before, I really do believe this is a great long hold company. I have a lot of confidence that she's gonna grow and become quite successful here in the States. But that doesn't mean we can't be taking advantage of those huge jumps on the chart. Just because you're in it for a long hold doesn't mean you can't make money along the way. Get in when she's cheap. You see the volume coming in, ride it up, sell, take your gains. When she comes back down, buy in cheap. There's no reason to miss profits. Now there's a lot of information out there. You can watch my first video on April 2nd. You can also go to the website of the company or their financial. Surprisingly enough, their most current financial has a lot of technical information in it, not just financial. And you've got that stock research page I pointed out to you, and I'll put the link down there. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya. Para pa pa dam para pa pa para pa da pa pa dam para pa pa ti da di da tu du du pa pa dam pa 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 da di da du pa pa